Okay, so I am, um, I'm turning these down on the machine and I've got no tail support because I haven't got a tail stock that'll fit there. So in order to cut this thread, I'm having to be perilously close to the uh, to the chuck so the potential for crashing the tool is quite high um, i've done one without incident uh, i'm just gonna have to be really really super careful okay zero everything off Let's uh, take the scratch pass first. And I am disengaging the half nut at the when it reaches the end here. And then I'm putting it back in, in reverse, back into the same number. take it out and just test the uh, the actual rose joint which is the thing that's got fit okay so that's two done without crashing it's two to go right slight change of plan or some bottle screws right so I had intended to just do this with a um, with a straight bar, but thinking about it, I thought why not use a bottle screw and then it gives me more adjustability. It's pretty obvious, really. So I'm going to just so these if I went to the trouble of doing it are no good anymore. But there we are. Let's just remake these with the bottle screws. So first thing to do is to remove the dead wood. Right, now one of these is a left-handed thread not that one it's that one so that's going to be the bracket side and this is going to go on to the uh, thing rose joint now these are m10 because i checked them in the shop uh, so i need another nut anyway let's uh, just get this bracket thing welded onto there for now so this is slightly annoying. Um, I was swapping over for my number 12 cup, which I usually use for stainless steel. And I found that the, uh, the gas lens adapter has, I don't know, I must have trodden on it or something. Look, it's gone all, look at that. I honestly don't remember doing this. I don't know what's happened, but it's pretty knackered. I don't think there's any rescue in that at all. So I have to get a new one, which means I'm gonna have to, I can't fit the number 12 in gas lens now. Uh, and the other biggest size I've got is eight. So we'll just have to go with eight. Right, I'm not gonna uh, 
faff around trying to hold this somehow. I'm just going to hold it by hand here and I'm just going to go in one quick blip at 130 amps. Couldn't get off the button. Okay, it's got it anyway. See, I've had to sort of, uh, I had to go around, it's a bit more palaver than I thought actually. I had to go around quite a few times just to get some material to the underside. Um, so they're all done. And that one's got a bit of a lump there, which although it's not the end of the world and it won't make any difference, I don't like it. So I'm just going to grind that off and quickly do this little bit, just this bit here again. I think I can put it all together now to try and get them all about the same length based on that first one. exact opposite one which is that one right that's it okay so this is slightly confusing but it's not too bad um now these nuts I'm, i will swap out actually for nylon ones but i just want to get it assembled now i'm putting a washer at the bottom there that gives it a little bit of leeway but that's the only washer Okay, so that, you see how that needs to come in a tiny fraction now. But anyway, let's get them all done first. One of the reasons I was going to use a nylock is it's got this domed bit where the nylon thing is. And I thought that that might ride on that nicer. So let's just try this. put nylocks on too much too on and off you to kind of lose the nylockiness of them but I haven't got much choice and I do want to sit and have a look see how it feels oh, look at that magic this is the first test. Oh, I can't believe it actually worked. And the other thing I thought I would do is put another nylock nut on upside down so it's got that same kind of rounded bit 
as the uh, top stopper, so it'd be a bit difficult to get it on like this. So I'll probably have to screw it on the right way, like this. Give it a bit of a bit of a thread and take it off. See if I can get it on like that. I think that was it. Yeah, there we are. Now, obviously, if I do that up too tight, it's going to stop it and it won't work. But that is an essential part because that is what's going to jam it down. Right, the, the reason I wanted to do this now, because this, this I really could have done well whilst we were, you know, outfitting the boat, but um, I wanted to do it now just to make sure, well, A, there's some welding to do, obviously, and uh, B, I wanted to make sure that it was actually going to work, because if it didn't work, um, I'd have had to think, thought of some other hatch mechanism, and what I, what I would have done is put four uh, barrel penetrators in, and, um, and and made latches through those. Actually, when I say it works, I mean, it, it, this bit works, but I, I haven't tested the actual gripping mechanism, so that's what I'm gonna do next. to set the camera up but it's... Uh, so it's really awkward I'll, I'd like to take this bottom plate out but I don't risk it so it's gonna fit like that there except each one is gonna go there okay that so, how am I going to hold that and mark it at the same time? Well, actually, no, what I'll do is I will mark where, this is it, I'll mark where the thingy goes. Right, so I've got position now for each of the parts, but, um, and I've got to just weld that on there like that. Um, Now the problem here is that this is perilously close to the hatch land face and I've got to be really careful not to let it twist by accident. Right. So I need to weld this without damaging anything. I think the tiny bit at a time method is what we're going to do. Can't think of anything else. Actually, I have thought of something else that I can do. And I can... I've got another ring, which was going to be destined for another hatch. but it's the same size. So I can clamp that on and it might just help to just minimize any distortion. I, I, to be honest, I really don't think there's gonna be any, uh, but I've just gotta be so careful with this because I, really I should have welded these on first and then it sent it off for machining, but, but I forgot about it. Straight in, 130 amps. Let's just do one tiny blob. Right, we're doing 
any more on that one. Go all the way around, then I'm going to wait for it to cool, and I'm going to do another tiny bit, and I'm going to do that. It's going to take forever. But I don't get this too hot. It's just so tempting to go along, but I'm having to resist. gonna try and uh, you can see how it fits at the moment. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna see if I can adjust them now. Okay, so I've got them under, so now I've got to sort of tighten them up a bit. Right, anyway, the, the point of this is that they're in the, the right place, so I'm going to carry on welding them on. Right, so I've... Uh, I'm kind of about three quarters of the way along. Um, but uh, I've got to go now, so I'm I'm nearly there. I mean, this isn't even hot. I, I could, I mean, I can. I've just done this, and I can put my hand right on it. But I, I'm being really, really careful not to get it too hot. Um, so I'll finish this off next week, and then I think we're done with the hatch, and then I can uh, carry on um, actually assembling the hull. I've got the a few more things that need to go into the hull yet. About. Um, five or six more penetrators and then I'm ready to put the whole thing together.